We're here at the SNET office to speak to the Director General of Social Security and National Insurance Trust. My name is Jifa Bampo and I'm here on behalf of TV3. Good evening. Good evening to you, Dr. Foritin Kroy, and thank you for speaking to us at TV3 and 3FM. Uh, good evening to you and good evening to all your viewers. Thank you. So um, we've had knowledge of um, the Auditor General's report which makes some queries uh, towards the SNIT and its management. First, let me ask, are you aware of the contents of this 2019 report? Um, yeah, I would say that I haven't quite cited the final report, but I think that uh, probably all the issues that, have, that are in there have come to our attention via management letter. Uh, as you may or may not know, since 2017, the Auditor General himself decided that they would audit SNET instead of uh, the, the normal external ed auditors that uh, companies will hire to do their external audit. So since 2017, the Auditor General has been auditing SNET. Uh, and in these annual audits, uh, issues come up they are brought to the attention of management, for management to take uh, remedial actions. Um, and then in the subsequent audits, they will come and verify whether uh, those items have been attended to or progress have been made and, and they are documented as such. So uh, I'm sure that uh, you know, I'm familiar with the issues. Mm. Now, <coughs> the contents of the report make for some concern for contributors and Ghanaians as a whole. It is a huge institution, um, has a lot of pedigree and history. And according to the Auditor General's report, it seems to suggest that SNIT is bleeding funds. For instance, non-collection of some rent from some of SNIT's property through Brawl Ghana, um, some 773 million Ghana cities that the Controller and Accountant General owes SNIT. Um, some 185 million US dollar housing project at Klago and Sakumono, and non recovery of some 151 million CDs from NTHC. Um, what's your response to this if Ghanaians see this or hear of it and feel like SNIT is losing money? Right. Um, I think uh, probably if you say SNIT is bleeding funds, uh, it's a little bit. Uh, of a, maybe, let me, for the lack of a better word, a mischaracterization, uh, because these funds that you are talking about have not been lost. It is just uh, monies that are outstanding that needs to be collected. Uh -huh. So uh, I wouldn't say we've written them off uh, and hence constituting a bleed. But, but be that as it may, I think uh, I want to underscore that a lot of the issues you've talked about are legacy issues. That, Going how far back? Um, I mean, some of them go as far back as probably 2010, 2009. Uh, if you take issues with, let's say, Control and Accountant General, that has been with SNET since inception. Wow. Uh, because you know um, the controller pays or not pays depending on their liquidity positions and so on and so forth. So that one has been around for a long time. So and, what are you doing in reference to controller and accountant general? Oh, controller and accountant general, uh, and just for the sake of your viewers, controller yes. and accountant general is just an employer who employs the public sector uh, workers, right? And because he pays them and they are supposed to remit social security contributions to the trust. And sometimes, as and when, depending on the exigencies of their cash flows, you know, they may miss, uh, just like any other employer sometimes will miss contributions. Uh, our job is to document it and recover pursuant to all the statutes that are in, in the act that uh, you know, govern our operations. So we, we are, in, um, we have an arrangement with controller. Uh, in fact, this was an arrangement that uh, we came up with last year, where the government uh, said that through the Ministry of Finance, because controller is under the Ministry of Finance, 
said that uh, for the arrears that have piled up, uh, they were going to retire them through the issuance of bonds, right? Because we can use bonds ourselves. But uh, let, me, let me deal with some of them. Um, the issues with, let's say, the loans to the various companies. Mm -hmm. I think that's, what, yes. that's part of what yeah. you are referring to. A lot of them have to do with housing, uh, property. Yes property development that the trust went into uh, somewhere in 2013, 2011, 2014, thereabouts. And the arrangements were that the trust partners with a private developer, uh, they both put up some amount of equity, albeit sometimes minimal. And then they turn around for the trust to lend into the JV, the joint venture. Uh, so that has been the case with, uh, you know, a few, maybe three or four of these uh, uh, property joint JV companies. Um, and so the 180 million, million whatever that you are talking about. Yes, that is I the Klagon and Sakumono estate. Yes, yes, so that is a, a JV with uh, a Regimanuel uh, Gray Limited. Part of the financing structure was that in addition to the equity, they will put in some debt, and SNET provided the debt. And then Reg Manuel uh, was the contractor. So they started the project. The market turned. They have, haven't been able to sell uh, the properties that has been developed. In a, so, they, so they've not been able to sell in order to pay SNET to back. Pay the, to pay the loan. Mm -hmm. And so... What we have done, and this is since I came, is, you know, how do you salvage the situation? Uh, so instead of waiting for them to sell the property, uh, the, at least the ones that have been completed, we then have gotten into an arrangement where we're going to do a swap, where we're saying, okay, let's value these properties through an independent valuer, find out how much these properties are worth, and then trade it for the debt. Mm -hmm then Senate can then decide now all so of that will be with know how much of yes, the property you, that we've gotten you back, back into our well, on our books and then portfolio. we see what we we'll do with it. All right. Um I mean things like NTHC mm -hmm. uh that those loans were advanced to NTHC 2013, 2014. They paid some, but some were still outstanding. And then what I, I think that one we've done some work on it. What we've done is that we've said, okay, well then let's value the company and then trade some of these uh, for receivables for equity. So mm -hmm. we've done a debt to equity swap okay. uh, with, with NTHC. Yeah. So, so, so you say that, um, you know, in 2017, there's an article um, where Bright Simmons mentions that SNIT's uh, portfolio, the property portfolio, is not doing very well. And so there's a, there should be a way for SNIT to turn that around so that, you know, funds don't just go aground. How far were things since mm -hmm. then? Because he said if you looked at banking, SNIT could very well do what the banks do, uh, uh, where they make money, which is from these loans. But I, I'm not sure how far you've come since then on yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think I saw that article, and that article, as you rightly said, was written, I think, in 20. 17. Yes. Um, and 2017 was when I became DG. Uh, as I said, uh, I inherited these issues and I have to deal with them. The, uh, SNET has an investment portfolio uh, and it's a, you know, a sizable one. And, you know, like with all investments, some do well, some don't do so well, and that's why you have a portfolio. I think in general, the SNET portfolio you know, has done well, uh, except in one particular area. That's the property that, that has area. to do with property. But it seems that's where uh, SNIT has sunk a lot of money. Well, yes, in the past. Okay. In the past, SNIT has sunk a lot of money into property. Now we don't do that anymore. Uh, I think since I became DG, uh, other than the legacy issues where we are ra you are in midstream and you cannot retreat, so you have to find a way to get across to the shore, um, 
um, what I mean by that is that there are there is a work in progress. A lot of money has been spent on it, so you better finish it okay. so that you can actually have hope of getting money back. Mm. Uh, but other than that, you know, uh, Snet has not uh, in, invested in any new property yeah. ventures. So the parts of the property that has been okay. It has been doing well, maybe, other, uh, was the banking sector. We have a lot of shares in banks. And then, you know, when there was this... Uh, the, bank, the financial, financial sector, sector clean up. Clean up. Yeah, banks, some of the banks, a lot of the banks stopped paying dividends and so. But that's a short-lived thing, right? And we hope that we'll be back on track. The property market, market has uh, kind of hit a downturn, as you know. I mean, there's all kinds of high-rise properties uh, dotted across the skyline in, in Accra. Um, and so it makes it, uh, one, there is more competition, and two, our property market, if, uh, our property portfolio, if you look at it, are uh, commercial buildings that were built in the 90s. You know, if you look across to the pyramid building over here, Snip pension uh, house. Yeah, uh, yeah, pension house. If you look and at World Trade Center. And then the main one on the, is it at Sadabraka? Yes, there is that one mm -hmm. there. Uh, you look at uh, where Fidelity Bank is, mm -hmm. Rich Towers. Mm -hmm. All those have been uh, dotting the landscape for uh, decades, right? So they are old. And so, you know, they, they, they need to compete with the new ones. Uh, and so there are challenges where you have old... Uh, uh, trying uh, old, to repurpose yes. old buildings to fit the modern exactly. mode. So, so with those, uh, we have had some issues with tenants and, um, you know, they trying to get some level of, expecting some level of service that they have not been getting. But we have taken the steps to try and get these properties refurbished and bring them up to standard. Uh, so that it can compete. Uh, yes, so, f so in that, on that front, we've had a bit of headwinds, uh, but it, those, were things, th those were things that had started several years ago where you know, they haven't been you know, kept up to date and the chickens, I guess, come home to roost. But uh, we, we are in the process of sorting them out. All right. Now, um, I understand um, SNIT's assets are some 9.5 billion CDs. Am I correct? Yes, I, I think thereabouts. That's uh, a lot of money, sir. Well, uh, Jifa, it's not a lot of money when you look at the liabilities that you have. Mm. Uh, and that's I, the point. Because if you have 9.5 billion in assets, yet you have all these monies outstanding, then some contributors and pensioners would then complain about what they are receiving. They, I dare say they may even say that they should be receiving more than what they get. What's your view on that? Okay, so the structure of the SNIT uh, scheme is, um, well, first of all, it's a defined benefit scheme. And what that means is that the, the benefits that you are going to get is defined right from day one when you start to be a contributor. You know exactly what you're going to get when you get on pe when you go on pension because it's, it's like a contract is defined. Um, so the in terms of you know changing what people get, uh, that one is legislated. But 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 the the Onos is on SNET to make sure that it has enough funds to be able to, at the minimum, meet those contractual payments. So now, are you saying that um, these monies outstanding mentioned in the Auditor General's report, for instance, mm. does not impact payment to your uh, 200,000 and over pensioners? It will not impact what your members project they will receive no. because I thought the idea was yes. SNIT gets all this good money invests it and based on the dividends then you pay uh, a good contribution to right. to members right okay so the answer to that is that it will impact in the long run okay so what do I mean by that what I mean by that is that the these funds which we have in reserve right 
at some point are going to be called upon to be used to make payments, to make, to make contractual payments. So if the funds are outstanding now, and you don't, I don't have cash flow issues, I need a cash to pay now. If the funds are outstanding and I have cash, I can meet my current payments. But at some point, I need to bring home those outstanding funds to make them liquid so that I can then use to make more current payments, right? Now, so here is the deal. The contributions that people make are not enough to pay the benefits that they get, right? So we rely on investment income to supplement those contributions in order to make those payments, right? Uh -huh. uh, so we, our job is to make sure that we have enough assets or enough reserves built up such that come rain or shine, COVID or no COVID, property, property slumps or no property slumps, people's pensions that they are supposed to get contra contractually will not change and you'll be able to make those payments, right? So ultimately, people will get what they earn or are expecting to earn. Correct. And um, it's up to SNIT to make that happen. To make that happen. In spite of whatever the circumstances may be. That's right. So if I have a bumper year today, uh, this year, that doesn't mean that I can go ahead and increase everybody's pension. You know, can you do that? I can't. Okay. You, you can't increase the pension. I, I, I can't. Mean, I, I know you talked about there's a contractual, um, you know, there's, you know what you are getting at yes. the end of it all. But if people say that what I'm getting isn't enough, can't SNIT make it better? No. That's a short answer. The short answer is no, because the, the act states exactly how people should be paid. paid. Right? And it's all dependent on how much you it earn. It depends on how much you, you contributed, right? Okay, in how fact, much of your earnings you contributed yes. over your working yes. life. Yes, in fact, right. I like to think about it as us being an insurance company mm -hmm. where we insure people's occupational income, that is income associated with the work that you do. So you, currently, you are working, you're receiving a certain amount of money, you come to SNIT and say, hey, SNIT, I'm going to insure this stream of income so that one day, one day, when something happens, the unthinkable, which is retirement, which will eventually come happens, you're going to replace it for me. So how much you declare to us and ensure, that is how much that we pay you on a, on, a, on a manner that is commensurate with that. You get the idea? Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, if you are crying that your pension is not enough, ask yourself the, the question, how much have you insured with us? I always have an example that I like to give. And that is, if you're driving a Mercedes and you go to the insurer uh, to buy insurance, it's just so that when the unthinkable happens, you get a replacement, right? And if you go and you tell them that, no, you are driving a Tico or um, uh, you know, a Picanto, and then you pay the premium that they will charge you for a Picanto, when you have that accident or when that car gets stolen and you go back to the insurance company, do you expect them to give you a Mercedes? The answer is no. They will give you the equivalent of the Picanto that you insured. So the pensions that people get, because we are a contributory uh, scheme, depends on how much they have contributed. Okay. Uh -huh. but, but our job is to make sure that that insurance company will remain solvent to be able to meet those claims when, when they come. Okay. Um, in relation to that then, what, I mean, contributors want to have confidence mm. that SNIT is managing these resources very well. I understand that, you know, uh, it depends on people contributing. We have just about, what, 1.2 million contributing regularly, is that it? We have about, we have about 1.6 million 1 .6 contributing, contributing on a regular basis. On a regular basis. But, okay. And then we have about 4 million people in the database. But you have 4 mm. million, so that's, so you have about 6 million people. No, so out of that 4 million. Okay, so out of the 4 1. million. 1.6 million Okay, so let's do that again. So how many people do you have on the SNIT database? 4 million we, we have people. We about 4 million 
All right. And how many of them are contributing regularly? We have about 1.6 million. 1.6 mm. million. All right. So what confidence can SNIT give to these people? And it's 200,000 over pensioners. Right. That there's no cause for alarm. This audit report uh, raises these issues. They should not be, should they not be concerned? Right. I, I think I will say to contributors that there is no cause for undue concern, right? That uh, the, we will meet our obligations. We have not defaulted yet, and I don't think uh, we're going to default anytime soon. Uh, you know, having said that, that doesn't mean that we don't have uh, headwinds, uh, you know, uh, ahead of us. Um, we have COVID, which is basically affecting people's jobs and, uh, you know, employers are not able to pay the salaries that they are supposed to be paying and so on and so forth. So it will have a negative impact on, the, on, 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 on SNET. Um, these things that have been, you know, the, uh, uh, that we are talking about today are things that we need to pay attention to so that we can rectify them and make sure that every penny that is outstanding comes home, all right? Uh, I like contributors to know that since I said this, a lot of these are legacy issues. Since I became DG, which is in 2017, uh, we haven't had any such issues, you know, under my watch. If for nothing at all, what we've done is actually through audits and renegotiations, uh, we've been able to save the trust quite a bit of money. How I much? Think it's about 500 million uh, Ghana cities as at the end of 2020. And these came through renegotiation of certain investment contracts uh, in these property sectors uh, that you've been talking about, the work that is in progress. Also, in the normal pension administration, uh, we've been able to, uh, I think we saved about 140 million Ghana cities just by making sure that at the end of the month when I'm running that payroll, the money that is going out is going out to legitimate pensioners. No ghosts. No ghost names. I'm sure you heard about that. We've yes. deleted quite a bit of ghost names. You know. Basically, we just, we've tried to make uh, the operation of the trust a little bit more efficient uh, right? with respect to the administration and then with the respect to the investments. Uh, to make sure that the legacy portfolio that we had, which is not that agile, uh, and that is not probably yielding um, uh, what the, the return that we expect because of the downturn in the market, we've tried to make sure that was there to be able to save some monies. So I would like to assure the contributors and the pensioners that uh, their pensions are secure. With respect to even controller, uh, they've been engaged, I've engaged them. Uh, we've had understanding, like I said, that some of these uh, outstanding debts have to be uh, uh, repaid, and repaid such that the full value of the money pursuant to Section 64, where interest and penalties are levied, are all complied with. And, and, and I think, uh, you know, the Auditor General would verify, and, and because they are still here, and they, they are still auditing, they are still our auditors in some of their letters where every year they come back and check on what the, the issues they raised the year before. Uh, in the latest re letter that I got in March this year, a lot of these issues uh, have been settled. Um, the president during his State of the Nation address indicated that uh, SNIT numbers will become TIN numbers, national ID card numbers will become TIN numbers, all in an effort to expand the tax net so that GRA is identifying other people other than the regular people we know. Um, tell us how SNIT comes into all of this. So what I think the president said in regard with respect to SNIT is that the Ghana card number would become the SNIT number. Uh -huh. So not the TIN, the TIN is for the GRA. To save money, SNIT decided that it will be good for us uh, financially and operational wise to uh, tap into the Ghana card um, uh, construct, the Ghana card number. And by the way, it, there's also a law that has been passed 
that says that going forward, nobody can access public services without having a, and a, a Ghana, Ghana card. card number. So you couldn't come and transact with SNIT if you don't have a Ghana card number. So what we've done is that we have retooled our systems uh, and such that the interface to, to identify customers, uh, members and clients when they present themselves before us will not be a SNIT card that we issue when the past were issued at a tremendous cost, but the Ghana card, which contains the person's biometrics, and somehow if you find a way to link that Ghana card to the ASNET account, that Ghana card number to the ASNET account number, then all they have to do is to carry just one card. And then when they come to us, we swipe it and it automatically links into their account and then we are in business. The same thing will go for uh, beneficiaries, like if you nominate your children to be beneficiaries, in the past, we're not even taking their biometrics. Uh, we just hope that one day, when they need uh, to access funds and they come, then we put them through all kinds of interviews and so on and so forth. Now, because every Ghanaian is going to be on it, all you have to do is to give us the Ghana card number of your beneficiaries, and that's it. So if one day they have to come and claim, they come, be based on the card number, and then they can put their finger there and we can tell, oh, this is who they say they are. So that's, that's what we, gonna, we are doing, right? So between now and then, uh, I think our members and clients are going to experience uh, certain things. What are they going to see very soon? What we, we've started merging uh, data from the National Identification Authority with SNET. Mm -hmm. So if you went to register and at NIA and you give them your SNET number, which you were required to if you were a SNET contributor, now we are linking the Ghana card number that you were given with your SNIT account. So we're doing some merging of data. I think we've, so far we've merged about uh, maybe 600,000 of those. Um, and so we have about another one million or so to go. Um, and then we are, we're gonna send, I think uh, probably by April 12th or so, we're gonna send text messages to our members Who's the, uh, for whom the merging of data has been successfully complicated, uh, uh, completed. completed. So we'll tell them that, look, uh, you know, we've been able to merge your Ghana card number with your SNIT number. And so going forward, now you can show up at the offices with just your Ghana card number. There are some people who did not. Uh, who, what about people who are not SNIT contributors at all? Right. So or SNIT contributors who don't have a Ghana card yes, number. Yes, so there are some people uh, one, let me t deal with, the, there are some people, some SNIT contributors who did not give their Ghana, who did not give their SNIT number to the NIA when they were registering. Mm -hmm. So there, for them, we've developed an app, which we're going to roll out uh, maybe uh, in the middle of April. And they can use that app and put in the necessary information and then automatically their numbers, they will be verified and then it will be merged. Okay, so their so records we'll, will be updated. Will be updated. Then, uh, the people who are not yet SNET contributors, right? So they, they don't have any SNET number. That's all right. When they are ready to be SNET contributors, they show up at our office. This time when they come, they give us their Ghana card. We swipe it. It automatically gets into the NIA database. It gives us all the information, the required information that has already been submitted to the NIA. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Tinker, and this is where we must leave it. Uh, thank you very much for addressing these issues in the Auditor General's report, and as well as the updates on digitization. Thank Th you. Thank you very much, uh, Jifa. But I, I want to use your platform to assure our members and contributors that um, this audit is a routine audit uh, for the three years or so that the Auditor General has been auditing us. There hasn't been any uh, financial malfeasance uh, that people should be worried about. Uh, the issues raised are mainly legacy investment issues which we are trying to sort out and so I just want to assure our contributors and our pensioners that uh, their pensions are secure and that they should keep their faith with us and we will uh, do right by them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much sir.